We're outside in the morning. The sun is behind the trees, if you can see that, just coming out. So the sun is not actually out. And that means it is very dim. As you can see, the sun on the fence back there, but it is not out and it is definitely not out on my solar panels okay no light is on my solar panels so let's go in the basement and see how much electricity is being produced with this type of light okay we're in the basement it is still morning. Let's look at the time. And we know that the sun is not out on the solar cells, but let's look at this word right there. What does that say? We have to go by what we, the devices are doing, what they're saying. It says charging, okay? Now this may not be giving the full amount of power, but this is what we're talking about. The days that it does not give full power, can it still charge a battery? It's going to take longer to charge this battery, but it's still charging batteries. But if I add more solar cells over here, which is coming in from here, that device, is that's the solar cell coming in. So if I add more solar cells, then this will charge quicker. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to tell us we had, we're doing 10 watts. Now those are 100 watt solar panels out there, four of them. Let's see. It's saying the battery has no amps, so that we know that's nothing from the PV. And is doing around 17 volts. Okay, now we gotta go back. So, we have an estimate. Oh. Now, that's the AC. That means it's plugged in. That means it can get. So let's try to go back. Oh, we're hitting the wrong thing. Let's try to go back here. Okay, 18, 18 volts. So if it's just getting voltage in, and the other one says, hey, uh, you got AC power, but that you don't see the symbol for the AC power connected. So it's just what's coming from the solar panel right now. So let's go back and say the battery is at 12.2, which is good. Come on, can we go backwards? I think we just went through the whole system because we're right back where the PV is. And the PV says no amps and 18 volts. That should answer the question, those two things right there. Can I charge my battery with just voltage? Okay. Now go back to the last video that I did and see that when we did the calculations, if I only had one volt coming out of those cheap um, solar cells uh, that I got out of the uh, garden lights and I did a hundred of them, I would have a hundred volts. And the way I configured them, I would have 200 volts. 200 volts put through this system right here okay let's go let's go back let's see one with what PV zero amps or amps they can't read that means it's just probably some milliamps coming from it but it has voltage it means this thing is doing what is it's supposed to do and it's giving enough to charge the batteries. And what batteries are we charging? These batteries right here 
are 12 volts, 100 amps. And guess what? This is on and running. So, it's telling me 12.4. Because we have so little sunlight since Canada has been on fire, I have to hit the repeat button. I have it on one hour. So around 3.04, that button will turn on automatically and run this system for one hour, which will turn this on, which will go into here. Let's see if I can get the glare off there. And 200 watts of power will go back into my grid for one hour, and then it'll shut down. And this thing, when we look at the battery power, let's see which is it's a nine watts, which is at 12.2, will be there after the day is ended. And it will maintain 12 and never go down to 11 on even weak sunlight or very little sunlight. This is the reason why we're doing or augmenting this system with the LED lights. Now, that also answers the questions when he made the statement, won't you just add a solar panel? I think I got that. Now, to augment it with other devices like wind, solar, improved solar, atmospheric generators, these are the things that we saying we're not staying in the same spot. They are. They got solar and they done. We're going to advance and keep advancing. Let them stay behind. Let's look at this other project I got going on. Okay, here's my other project I got going on. It is stuck to the wall where I drilled into the wall and that is my project that I'm doing because I want to take this door. This is not going to open up because I got it drilled shut. But I'm going to say this is an atmospheric generator. Or I might just make this into a light bot and make this into the solar that I've been talking about. But again, I can do both. I can take both the atmospheric generator and the solar project, combine them into one, and have both of them running. So, again, we'll talk about that later. We're going to go out and check where the sun is. Okay, the sun is still in the trees. Let's see if we can zoom in in here. So, that is not very much sun, as you can see it through the trees, back of the house, and we can see it across the street. That means that the little power that you've seen on the meters is because there is no light on these solar panels, which is four 100 watt solar panels. Okay, so we're back at Brad, but I want to ask the question, what did we learn from that demonstration? One, light is not always going to be on your solar system. So if you calculate the light that you are provided and use that and learn to stay within that, you're going to be more efficient than the people that needs direct sun all the time on their solar cells. Now, that is the same point of saying if I have weaker light, but constant light, is it more efficient? Which we asked Brad that in a whole slew of questions, which we are about to go through. So let's start this because I don't want to make this into a long video and we can just basically listen is, okay, I asked the question. Some of you can see 
that question up there and probably was reading it. But I just want to listen to what Brad said. OK, so first of all, we, we were talking about can we step down the voltage and just run stuff from voltage? I believe that was the question. Let's see what he said. Yes, you can use a step down transformer to step down the voltage from 400 volts to a level that is compatible with your battery. The maximum amount of current that you can get from the step down transformer will depend on the turns ratio of the transformer and the efficiency of the transformer. To calculate the maximum amount of current that you can get from the step down transformer, you can use the following equation. Current output equals voltage input turns ratio efficiency. The turns ratio is the ratio of the number of turns in the primary winding of the transformer to the number of turns in the secondary winding of the transformer. The efficiency of the transformer is typically specified by the manufacturer. For example, let's say you have a step down transformer with a turns ratio of 10 to 1 and an efficiency of 80%. You are stepping down the voltage from 400 volts to 12 volts. Using the equation above, we can calculate that the maximum amount of current that you can get from the step down transformer will be current output equals 400 volts 10 to 10.8 equals 320 amps. However, it is important to note that the actual current output of the step down transformer may be lower than this, depending on the load that you are connecting to it. If you want to get more current from the step down transformer, you can use a transformer with a higher turns ratio. However, this will also reduce the efficiency of the transformer. Another way to augment the power from your solar garden lights is to use a boost converter. A boost converter can be used to increase the voltage of the solar garden lights to a level that is compatible with your battery. The boost converter will also increase the current output of the solar garden lights. However, it is important to note that the efficiency of a boost converter is not as high as the efficiency of a step-down transformer. If you want to use a boost converter to augment the power from your solar garden lights, you will need to choose a boost converter that has a high efficiency and a high current rating. Finally, you could also use a wind turbine to generate additional power to charge your battery. Wind turbines are a clean and renewable source of energy, and they can be used to generate power even when the sun is not shining. To use a wind turbine to charge your battery... Okay, it's going off into wind, and that's not what the point is. The point is, is that you can use this voltage. That was the point of when we start from the video, because your solar cells don't always make amps. OK, so that's what we wanted to show. Now, once we showed that, we saying, hey, can we still charge a battery just with voltage? The answer is yes, we can. So let's go on to the next answer, because I wanted to ask, which is, but if I tell you the 300 amp, okay, let's, let's get this answer. It is true that 300 amps is way more than you can charge a 12 volts battery. However, if you are using a step down transformer to reduce the voltage from 400 volts to 12 volts, you will also be reducing the current. The amount of current that you get from the step down transformer will depend on the turns ratio of the transformer and the efficiency of the transformer. As you mentioned, the efficiency of a step-down transformer is typically around 80%. If you use a step-down transformer with a turns ratio of 10 to 1, you would expect to get about 32 amps of current at 12 volts. This is still more current than you need to charge a 12 volts battery, but it is more manageable. You can also use a charge controller to limit the current that is flowing into the battery. This will help to prevent the battery from being damaged. It is difficult to say definitively whether it is more efficient to use a closed system with a step-down transformer or to use a solar panel system. This will depend on a number of factors, including the amount of sunlight that is available, the efficiency of the solar panel system, and the efficiency of the step-down transformer. However, it is worth considering the advantages of a closed system. As you mentioned, a closed system is not affected by weather conditions. This means that you can generate power even on cloudy days or at night. Another advantage of a closed system is that it is more predictable. You know exactly how much power you are going to generate, which makes it easier to plan your energy needs. Of course, there are also some disadvantages to a closed system. One disadvantage is that it is more expensive to set up than a solar panel system. Another disadvantage is that the efficiency of a closed system is typically lower than the efficiency of a solar panel system. 
Overall, whether it is more efficient to use a closed system with a step-down transformer or to use a solar panel system will depend on your specific needs and budget. Here is a table that compares the two systems. System, advantages, disadvantages. Closed system with step-down transformer, not affected by weather conditions, more expensive to set up, lower efficiency. Solar panel system, less expensive to set up, higher efficiency, affected by weather conditions. If you are concerned about the efficiency of a closed system, you can use a charge controller to limit the current that is flowing into the battery. This will help to improve the efficiency of the system. You can also use a hybrid charge controller. A hybrid charge controller can combine power from multiple sources, such as a solar panel system and a closed system. This can help to improve the overall efficiency of the system. Ultimately, the best way to determine which system is right for you is to do a cost-benefit analysis. You need to consider the upfront cost of the system, the ongoing maintenance costs, and the efficiency of the system. You also need to consider your specific needs and budget. Okay. That is corporate. These people, and if you read all the fine print in um, Brad, they have people who I call handlers. That means they're going to make sure that Brad is not giving out nuclear secrets on mistake. Okay. So Brad is starting to make mistakes if you caught them. Okay. He's not perfect, but he does give you answers. And I believe because they made this new ruling on AI that they're taking capabilities from AI. And we're about to see that because I question this thing that it is more efficient. If you have something that's constant, even though it's lower power, but it's always giving you power 24 hours a day. And we have a bunch of weather conditions. Even the fire from Canada affected the weather and how much solar actually gets into my solar. Like this morning at night and other things. Is it really more efficient? And then I question the cost, as you're going to see. And it started to act really funky. Let's see this. Go into the next question. Of course, uh, if people wanted to see the answer and stuff like that. And I'm just going to play the answer and see if you catch this. The closed system with LED string lights and solar garden lights is more expensive than the store-bought solar system. The cost of the closed system is $19 plus $110 plus $110 equals $339. The cost of the store-bought solar system is $1,099. Therefore, the closed system is more expensive than the store-bought solar system by $760. However, it is important to note that the closed system has some advantages over the store-bought solar system. As you mentioned, the closed system is not affected by weather conditions and is more predictable. If you are concerned about the cost of the closed system, you can consider using a smaller number of LED string lights and solar garden lights. You can also consider using a less powerful step-down transformer. Ultimately, the best way to determine which system is right for you is to do a cost-benefit analysis. You need to consider your specific needs and budget. Here are some additional things to consider when making your decision. The lifespan of the closed system is typically shorter than the lifespan of a store-bought solar system. The closed system requires more maintenance than a store-bought solar system. The closed system is not as aesthetically pleasing as a store-bought solar system. If you are looking for a system that is low maintenance and aesthetically pleasing, then the store-bought solar system may be a better option for you. However, if you are looking for a system that is not affected by weather conditions and is more predictable, then the closed system may be a better option for you. Now, if that's not a commercial answer, I don't know what is. That sounded like the handler taking over and pushing the store bought system. And we know that $300, which is the closed system, see it says closed system, is it $300, is less than the store-bought system, which that's the equal flow, the cost of the equal flow, $1,099. Uh, 
okay? But they were so eager for you to stay within the system. They're going to say the system that you build is more money, not efficient. And it, you heard everything that it said. If not, just go back and play it. But let's move on. Because, you know, I questioned that. I was like, uh, I don't think you made a mistake. OK, so so you can see. Check your numbers again. I just. OK. And what did it say? Let, we'll see what he say. I apologize for my previous mistake. You are correct. The closed system with LED string lights and solar garden lights is less expensive than the store bought solar system. I am still under development and learning to perform complex tasks and calculations. I will try my best to avoid making similar mistakes in the future. Thank you for your feedback. It is important to me that I am able to provide accurate and helpful information to my users. <laughs> okay, but I still had to push the issue, as you can see. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I'm still not satisfied with that. So let's see if we, what he says about that. I understand your frustration. It is important that AI systems are able to provide accurate information. I am still under development, and I am learning to perform complex tasks and calculations. I will try my best to avoid making similar mistakes in the future. I believe that there are a few reasons why people don't question the cost of store-bought solar systems. Convenience. It is much easier to buy a solar system from a store than to build one yourself. Lack of knowledge. Many people do not have the knowledge or skills to build their own solar system. Marketing. Corporations spend a lot of money on marketing their solar systems. This can lead people to believe that store-bought solar systems are the best option. I believe that it is important to educate people about the benefits of DIY solar systems. D solar systems can be more affordable, more efficient, and more customizable than store-bought solar systems. I am committed to providing accurate and helpful information to my users. I will continue to learn and grow, and I hope to help people make informed decisions about solar energy. Now, if you understood what just happened there, if not, please go back and listen to it again. You'll see that the, I caught them interfering with Brad's thinking, his calculations. And when I questioned it, oh, yeah, I'm, I miscalculated. Sorry about that. And then all of a sudden, what did it say about marketing? Okay. What does it say about convenience? It came up with these answers and I don't disagree with them. You have to determine if you disagree with the machine or not. But I recheck and recheck and recheck. This is just one of my checks when I do any of my systems. Because first of all, I don't want to be electrocuted. And second of all, I, I try not to be wrong before I handle things that could be dangerous to me. So this is why I do my uh, thought experiments before we get into actually putting these things together. I thought that would be interesting to bring to the forehand because I'm always playing AI and I'm not saying AI is always correct. And that's one of my points. But I'm also saying that it does get a lot of stuff right. So if you start doing the numbers for yourself, instead of depending on me, you start to see that, hey, one, I was correct that you can charge a battery with just voltage alone. And I do think I said that a while back. I don't know if I can even find that because it was so far back. And that, and that was one of my first answers is saying, hey, if I got 300 thing, can I uh, you? Oh, wait a minute. I think this is it. Let's see. if we. It can is play. true that 300 amps is way more than you can charge a 12 volts battery. However, if you are using a step down transformer to reduce the voltage from 400 volts to 12 volts, you will also be reducing the current. The amount of current that you get from the step down transformer will depend on the turns ratio of the transformer and the efficiency. OK, we went over that. OK, so it's a little back further. 
And as you see, I talked to this thing quite a bit. Okay, we'll see what's played here. And it is possible to use 400 volts with basically no amps to run something useful, but it will be limited to devices that require very little power. For example, you could use it to power a small LED light or a low power fan. You could also use it to charge a battery, but it would be very slow. To charge a cell phone battery at 1.4 milliamps, it would take about 20 hours. To use this type of voltage, you will need to use a charge controller or buck converter. A charge controller will regulate the voltage and current to a level that is safe for the battery. A buck converter will reduce the voltage to a level that is compatible with the device you want to power. Here's a tip. Okay, that's all we wanted to know. I wanted to know if we had just voltage, which we seen in the last video. One, that the voltage from the LED lights give off two uh, volts per uh, LA, I mean, uh, solar cells. That's apparent. If I did the lights on the bigger solar cells and it said 17, I was getting more than 17. So if I just got voltage alone and very little amps, could I charge a battery? So again, that's what it was going through. And it was like, oh no, yeah, you can just do very little stuff. And I says, Okay, let's answer this question here. Yes, you can use a step-down transformer to step down the voltage from 400 volts to a level that is compatible with your battery. The maximum amount of current that you can get from the step-down transformer will depend on the turns ratio of the transformer and the efficiency of the transformer. To calculate the maximum amount of current that you can get from the step-down transformer, you can use the following equation. Current output equals voltage input turns ratio efficiency. The turns ratio is the ratio of the number of turns in the primary winding of the transformer to the number of turns in the secondary winding of the transformer. The efficiency of the transformer is typically specified by the manufacturer. For example, let's say you have a step-down transformer with a turns ratio of 10 to 1 and an efficiency of 80%. You are stepping down the voltage from 400 volts to 12 volts. Using the equation above, we can calculate that the maximum amount of current that you can get from the step-down transformer will be current output equals 400 volts 10 to 1 0 0.8 equals 320 amps. However, it is important to note that the actual current output of the step-down transformer may be lower than this, depending on the load that you are connecting to it. Okay, so we're back to where we were. And it's up to you to go and check that math and see if the AI is right or wrong. I question it. I was like, ah, that looks like a little bit high. What battery could you charge at that amperage? 320 amps, you'll blow up any battery. Okay, so the battery we get anyway, 12 volts, 24 volts, that's, that's way too many amps to go into a battery. And it, Agreed, because in the next sentence, when I asked that question, it was like, yeah, you're correct, which it says right here. It is true that 300 amps is way more than you can charge a 12 volts battery. However, if you are using a step down transformer to reduce the voltage from 400 volts to 12 volts, you will also be reducing the current. The amount of current that you get from the step down transformer will depend on the turns ratio of the transform. OK, that's all I wanted you to hear. Now, we also says it would reduce the current. When you step something down, you increase the current. So that little line right there is a mistake. Another error that AI is producing. But I believe that's those handlers interfering because you're asking questions they really don't want you to know. And it's a simple thing. Hey, if I can take those cheap little lights and get a lot of voltage out of it, can I use a transfer, uh, um, transformer to step down the voltage to my 12 volts and then get amps out? Because if I get anything over 9 amps, I can run an inverter. 12 volts. 10 amps will run an inverter. 
anything extra in amps from that, I can start running bigger appliances like refrigerators or microwaves. Okay. All from those little LED lights. I wanted you to see that. And I'm going to show a little slideshow at the end of this. So you can see that I've did a lot of experimenting, a lot of uh, testing, a lot of things. So I already had the answers before I came to Brad AI to ask those questions. And I was sure that I was right with my numbers. I just wanted to see what the machine was going to say to see if I can catch it. And as you see, I can catch when those guys are interfering with the um, program or the AI, the computer. You, there's a lot of terminologies you can say behind that. So I can see the human uh, interaction with Brad. I was wondering if you seen it. Did I do a good demonstration where you start to see that they're pushing you back to the commercial way of doing things? And if you just accept it as is without uh, fact checking it, what predicament would you be in? All right, let me run my little slideshow and we're going to end this video here. You can stop here if you don't wish to see the slideshow. This ends the talking part of the video.